Are streaming services like Spotify beneficial to independent and non-mainstream artists? Since the internet has become a mainstream part of our lives, music and how we consume and listen to our favourite songs have changed immensely. Long gone are the days where we would whack on a vinyl or make a cassette mixtape of our favourite hits of the month. As technology has changed, so has the way we've bought and distributed music. Napster and other pirating programs became the fastest way to share and listen to the latest music via MP3s, which quickly took the place of CDs. Unfortunately, this meant consumers were no longer buying many CDs, as they could now get it for free. And that really shocked the whole music industry into re-evaluating the way they distributed their music. Author Costa Casares quoted EMI's executive Ted Cohen saying, Napster is a cool thing. I think it's the coolest thing to come around. I also thought, the moment I show it, my God, this could destroy the whole business. How do you take something like this and turn it into something the industry really could use? iTunes, Pandora and Spotify are just some of the plethora of ways that you can get your music fixed legally. In Abhijit Sen's work, he says, In 2008, listeners reported that their most preferred source for music were paid online services. And research done by two major label companies show that nearly two-thirds of Spotify users say they now engage in less music piracy. So that's a win for musicians, right? Maybe not. Spotify works on subscription revenue, which means a listener on average pays $9.99 per month to listen to any music they want. So if a listener wants to listen to only one song by one musician the whole month, that musician still only gets a tiny cut of the listener's money, as most of the subscription money is distributed to the top artists in the Spotify charts. Lee Marshall wrote about the skewed system of Spotify and how it only benefits musicians signed to major labels. So if it's not benefiting independent artists financially, is there any benefits to independent musicians at all? Well, before the introduction of MP3s and music streaming services, it was practically impossible to listen or even find new independent acts. The internet and technology has made it a whole lot easier for DIY and indie artists to record and produce their own music and distribute it around the world with only a few clicks. Spotify is a great source for discovering new music and even from really obscure genres. Kate Swanson interviewed Jamie Levison, drummer of The White Rabbits, he said that the service is a crucial add to the music discovery process simply because the catalogue is so vast and access is so unrestricted. He also says, I understand the revenue generating portion of the site is not entirely fair towards musicians and songwriters, but I'm not interested in using Spotify to make money right now. Using Spotify as a marketing tool, musicians and independent artists can grow their fan base around the world and can drive demand for ticket sales and merchandise revenue. Other important players to consider is growing need for pliable ownership of music, especially in the recent boom of vinyl records. With more and more subscriptions to Spotify every day, the fact that listeners are paying only to listen to their favourite tracks and not purchasing them outright, so instead of artists getting one lump sum amount of money for each song, they continue to get smaller amounts of money over their lifespan. So this could pay off in the long run. Right now, Spotify is made to benefit the fans and its own companies. But how long will this be sustainable? And will there be a more mutually beneficial way to enjoy your favourite artist's latest tracks with ease? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see.